Hi everybody, happy Monday, welcome to Art Day. Time to do some fantasy painting. The next couple of videos will be DSA characters I painted for one of my gaming groups. And I'm starting off with Melindra Damrod. She's an elf playing uh, in the DSA world, which is a lovely pen and paper um, role-playing game and uh, I started out by sketching her and uh, designing her online uh, not online like digitally uh, on my computer and uh, looked at many many reference photos combined a few of them and then um, added the character description that was given to me by the game master uh, then I uh, printed out that design, transferred it to watercolor paper and inked up all the lines because uh, I don't really want to use an eraser on uh, watercolor paper. I don't like the texture it leaves behind. It kind of peels up the paper and that's not my kind of thing. And... Uh, then I started painting her with watercolors, as you can see, and I'm starting off with some Schminke watercolors, uh, Schminke Academy, one of my favorites, and this is my favorite set that I'm using here. Uh, you can see on the left-hand side, uh, beneath the watercolor set, there's another painting already. So what I did, I um, used a th 30 by 40 centimeter block of watercolor paper, uh, put two characters on top, painted them one after the other, and then um, cut the paper in half for the players to get their pictures. So um, you can have a very tiny sneak peek already of what's to come up in two weeks, because I'm going to show you all the five characters I painted. I had shown you my character a little while ago, um, I painted a dwarf called Gilia, and uh, she's my character. I'm playing that one in that campaign, but all the other players are going to get their own um, uh, character pictures as well. And uh, we're also going to make standees out of those pictures for us to position ourselves on a map in... Um, uh, in a fight, for example, so that the game master knows where we are and who's visible for enemies and such. So that was a design um, uh, that, well, it was clear from the get-go that there would be standees as well. So I also designed the characters in a way that they would work as standees. But yeah, coming back to that little elf here. Well, she's not little. She's actually quite tall. Uh, she's a woodland elf. And uh, so I gave her a lot of greens, a lot of browns for um, the character design. And then uh, added a little bit of turquoise as kind of like a popping color for her. So I'm just going around shading uh, all of the brown bits and pieces using rather cool um, browns because uh, I want the warm olive green and the turquoise to pop. And also there, uh, when transferring my design to um, the watercolor paper, I did um, have a little bit of a rub off of that graphite, which I couldn't get rid of on the paper. So I'm going to paint the whole background as, as well. That wasn't my plan as I went in, uh, but well, I adjusted my paintings along the way and uh, decided, okay, I'm gonna give them all like a full background, no frames, no bleed out into white paper there. But here I'm working on the light blue and turquoise bits and pieces. And for that, I didn't use the Schminke watercolors because the, the Prussian blue is lovely, don't get me wrong. But I wanted a little more of a turquoise tone. So I used my um, 
Faber Castell, Albrecht Dürer, watercolor pencils. I have a huge palette uh, of colors there. I think it's 120 different kinds of colors. And they do have a lovely, lovely turquoise, like three different shades, shades that I very much like to use in any kinds of drawings or paintings or colorings and such. So I uh, opted for my watercolor pencils to get the right shades, the, the ones that I really liked. Um, I could have probably um, mixed maybe the Scion blue and the Prussian blue for um, like from the Schmincke watercolor set as well and have gotten like a very similar outcome, but I didn't feel like it. So using different kinds of sets is definitely a thing that I like to do um, when I have more like smaller and quote-unquote speedier paintings. Since I had five of these um, paintings to work on in a given amount of time, I didn't want to keep everybody waiting for too long. Um, I opted for not mixing my own colors too much. I mean, I do, but not as much as I would do with bigger pictures, maybe um, uh, portraits of real people instead of character pictures. Um, so I, I opted for a quicker way there just to, well, quote unquote, get done. Because uh, <laughs> those paintings were done in July, which was a very, very busy month for me. And uh, I didn't want to wait until like December to get those paintings done. So uh, I opted for the quick, quicker versions of painting things, if you know what I mean. So yeah, uh, I, I, it actually took me two days to paint uh, the five pictures and that is not counting designing and researching and uh, being inspired and creating and such digitally beforehand. Um, it's just the painting process itself. So uh, Melindra has a very dark black satiny kind of hair. Uh, but I wanted to give her a little more um, agility or movement. So I actually painted her hair a little more flowy and wild than it would be or than it was suggested, suggested in the character description. But I think it works really well. I mean, she's quite the statue, like when you look at her and there was well not a lot of movement and such so I thought it would be a nice contrast just to well have her a little bit of wild and flowy hair so I did let this dry for quite a bit um, and uh, <laughs> brought in <laughs> my uh, uh, charging cable for my iPad because I was watching lots and lots of interviews and podcasts and such while I was painting and uh, it helped with a little bit of the drying process. I didn't have to use my blow dryer before going in with more color and shading. Uh, here I'm using my favorite shading color which is indigo blue. It's a very very dark blue and I like that a lot for shading when it comes to browns, blues, greens, and even sometimes purples. So then I went with warm grays for that sort of skirty thing <laughs> on her. It's like, um, it's, uh, well, she, she has armor, but only fabric armor. So I wanted to give her a little more than just um, a shirt and some pants. So, uh, went with warm gray for that. Have her look very natural, fitting into the forest color-wise. And uh, she's kind of a little bit out of depth uh, at the current campaign because she's playing in a city and she's not used to that. But it's very lovely to see 
uh, the way of a woodland elf, uh, the way she would behave in the city. It's very awesome when playing. Um, like with a lot of watercolor paintings, it's all about layering, layering, layering. So um, I'm deepening up shadows here, creating uh, 3D, like not having my paintings flat, if you know what I mean. Um, so I'm doing that by shading a lot, going over things again and again, deepening up colors by even by just using the same uh, kind of color, not like shading green with blue, but going over and over and over it with the same kind of uh, green, just darkening things up and then having some lighter spots. This is something I really like about watercolors. You can very well shade and create depth in a painting without having to use 1500 colors that you sometimes have to do with um, colored pencils but you can do that by just layering one kind of color again and again and again. So of course my characters shouldn't be floating on the paper so for her I put in some grass because well again she's coming from the woods so she's probably standing in a meadow and uh, once I put in the background color you can kind of get the illusion of her standing in a green wooded area um, maybe like on a meadow in a forest or something because I'm gonna use the same green and uh, just dilute it way more with water. So I just marked half of the page there because again like I said in the beginning I'm gonna cut the paper uh, in half and I wanted to have pretty much exactly the half of the watercolor pad so it's so that all the paintings are 20 by 30 centimeters so I just uh, took a ruler and a graphite pencil and then marked the spot and taped down some masking tape because I'm gonna go in with lots and lots of water wetting my paper first and then adding paint uh, watercolor paint to um, get a very flowy kind of background and uh, I'm using a very big brush for that uh, so that I can work quickly and not have the water dry on the paper too much before I have like the rest of the painting or the rest of the paper wet down and uh, I'm working fairly quickly. Yes, of course, this video is time-lapsed, but I was working fairly quickly to just have a damp paper like all around, dropping in some paint, let it flow already um, using quite a lot of water when picking up paint and I decided to have that olive green and a little bit of lime yellow to uh, well indicate it's a kind of a forest setting and uh, she's she's like in the woodlands that's where she comes from so with all the character pictures and their backgrounds I try to choose colors for the background that are for one fitting with the character but also either in the same style or the same color as the main part of the character in this case green or uh, having them be contrasting to uh, the um, clothes or armor of uh, of my characters. So uh, that's why I dumped in a little bit of lemon yellow just to have a little bit of um, an interest there and not uh, well have everything just look green. So I dried all of that off with my blow dryer because that is a very fast way to for one dry off a page and also to well kind of push the pigment of the of the color uh, and have very interesting blooming going on in those kind of very loose background pages or background parts of a painting. So uh, I like to use 
my blow dryer then. And then I went in and added a little more details here and there, darkening up the hair a bit. It was a little too light for me. Uh, this is black hair, not gray. So I added a little more of the black, also added in some more uh, of the green um, to indicate she's standing on grass. And I'm using way less water here. So uh, this is way thicker and a little more opaque. And uh, like that, you can very quickly and easily put um, kind of like a, a grounding in on a character page or character picture. Shaded a little bit with indigo blue, uh, smooshing out those things, blending, but not too much. And then I went in with gel pens to add a little bit of bling uh, on the clothes and the armor, added a little more blue to the eyes because she has sapphire blue eyes and uh, just added a little bit of detail here and there until I was satisfied with the picture and uh, then I moved on to the next one but I'm gonna show that to you in two weeks so um, I hope you liked uh, the video and I hope you got inspired to maybe um, paint your own uh, character pictures in case you're uh, role-playing as well or maybe just other uh, fantasy uh, um, creatures it's not only humans or elves uh, that you can paint but there's lots and lots of references online that you can use to look at when designing your own character and I hope you enjoyed the video the blog is up uh, at 10 a.m central e uh, european time so you can hop on over to my web page and find out all the colors that i used on this picture like with the numbers and references and everything and i'm going to see you in two weeks with a new one and uh, thank you very much for watching